Nahana National Park Reserve in the Decho region of the Northwest Territories, Canada, approximately 500 kilometers (311 miles) west of Yellowknife, protects a portion of the Mackenzie Mountains natural region. The centerpiece of the park is the South Nahana River, Naha Dehe. Four noteworthy canyons reaching 1,000 meters (3,300 feet) in depth, called First, Second, Third, and Fourth Canyon, line this spectacular whitewater river. The name Nahana comes from the indigenous Dean language name for the area, Naha Dehe, which means, River of the Land of the Naha people, who some now speculate may have been the ancestors of the modern day Navajo people. <laughs> Geography There are several different landforms in the park that have taken millions of years to form, and give it a diversity not seen in any other national park in Canada. Sediment left by an ancient inland sea 500 to 200 million years ago had since become pressed into layers of rock. These layers were stacked about 6 kilometers (3.7 miles) deep and are peppered with fossils, remnants of these ancient seabeds. As the continents shifted, the North American and Pacific plates collided, the force of which pushed the layers of rock upwards. Ridges of rock bent and broke, leaving behind the ranges seen today. This same action also caused volcanic activity, sending molten lava into but not through the sedimentary rock. While there are no volcanoes in the park, towers of heated rock called igneous batholiths were sent upwards, pushing the sediment further up. The top layer of sedimentary rock was eventually eroded away, resulting in granite towers that form the Ragged Range. Over the last two million years, glaciers have covered most of North America, creating most of the land formations seen today. While previous ice ages affected the park area, the most recent, the Wisconsin Ice Age, 85,000 to 10,000 years ago, touched only the most western and eastern parts of the park. This has left many geological features in the park much more time to develop than most of North America had. The central feature of the park is the South Nahana River, which runs the length of the park, beginning near Moose Ponds and ending when it meets the Liard River near Nahana Butte. The South Nahana is a rare example of an antecedent river. The mountains rose slowly enough, and the river was powerful enough that the river maintained its course over its history, meaning it has the same path today as it did before the mountains rose. As the river was meandering, the canyons it carved also meander. Most visitors only visit the portions from Virginia Falls down. There are four main canyons that line the South Nahana River, named by prospectors, numbering them as they traveled up the river. The fourth canyon, also called Painted Canyon or Five Mile Canyon due to its length, begins with Virginia Falls, and was created as the falls eroded the limestone surrounding the river, working its way upstream. Third Canyon runs through Funeral Range, around 40 kilometers 25 miles long. Because its walls are composed of a stratum of shale, sandstones and limestone this canyon has long slopes instead of steep, flat walls like the lower canyons. Big Bend, a point where the river does a 45-degree turn, marks the end of Third and the beginning of Second Canyon. At 15 kilometers 9.3 miles long, it runs through the Headless Range. The final canyon is considered the most beautiful. Beginning after Deadman Valley, First Canyon boasts the highest, most vertical walls, cutting through very resistant limestone. It ends near Krauss Hot Springs, making it about 30 kilometers 19 miles long. Following this, the river slows and braids into different channels, passing through the park boundary, and coming together again near the village of Nahana Butte. Soon after the town, the South Nahana River joins the Liard River. Notable mountains in the park include Mount Nirvana, 61 degrees 52 minutes 29 seconds north, 127 degrees 40 minutes 49 seconds west, officially an unnamed peak, which at 2,773 meters (9,098 feet) is the highest mountain in the Northwest Territories. Slightly further north lies Mount Sir James McBrien, 62 degrees 07, 23, N 127 degrees 40 minutes 47 seconds west, the territory's second highest peak at 2,759 meters, 9,052 feet, and Lotus Flower Tower, 2,570 meters, 8,430 feet, 62 degrees 06, 51.6, N 127 degrees 41 minutes 50.4 seconds west. Both of which form part of the Cirque of the Unclimbables, 62 degrees 06, 06, N 127 degrees 40 minutes 15 seconds west. Topic: 
Topic: <laughs> Virginia Falls. At Virginia Falls or Nailicho in Dean, 61 degrees 36 minutes 26 seconds north, 125 degrees 44 minutes 12 seconds west, the river plunges 90 meters (295 feet) in a thunderous plume. Including the Sluice Box Rapids above the falls, it is more than twice the height of Niagara Falls. In the center of the falls is a dramatic spire of resistant rock, called Mason's Rock after Bill Mason, the famous Canadian canoeist, author, and filmmaker. The falls were initially located downstream at the east end of Fourth Canyon, and over the centuries carved through the limestone rock that surrounds the river. This continuous erosion shifted the falls upstream and created the Fourth Canyon. Due to the mist, the immediate vicinity of the falls is home to several rare orchid species. There is a proposal to rename the falls after former Prime Minister of Canada, Pierre Trudeau. Downstream from the falls, there are many notable rapids on the river including Figure 8, George's Riffle, and Lafferty's Riffle. <laughs> Rabbit Kettle Hot Springs The Rabbit Kettle Ganada Hot Springs and Tufa Mounds 61 degrees 56 minutes 36 seconds north 127 degrees 10 minutes 49 seconds west are the largest of Tufa Mounds in Canada. The largest of the mounds, the North Mound, is 27 metres 89 feet high and 74 metres 243 feet across. The source of the springs comes from deep in the Earth's crust, near the base of the granite batholiths that form the Ragged Range. The volcanic activity that raised the mountains still heats the water deep below the surface of the earth. The heated water percolates upwards, dissolving calcium carbonate from limestone deposits on its way by. When it reaches the surface springs, the water cools and the calcium carbonate particles are released. These microscopic particles settle to form porous calcite rims around the pools of water. These pools range in size from that of a bathtub to that of a fingernail. This process takes a great deal of time, and it is believed that the mounds themselves are around 10,000 years old, their creation beginning at the end of the last ice age. These rare and fragile features are protected as a Zone 1, special preservation area, and all visitors must be accompanied by Parks Canada staff in order to minimize impact and visitors to the North Mound are required to be barefoot. <laughs> Flora and fauna The park's sulfur hot springs, alpine tundra, mountain ranges, and forests of spruce and aspen are home to many species of birds, fish and mammals. The park lies within three of Canada's ecozones, the Taiga Cordillera in the west, the Taiga Plains in the east and a small southern portion in the Boreal Cordillera. According to Parks Canada there are 42 mammal, 180 bird, 16 fish and a few amphibian species found in the park. In the State of the Park Report 2009 the NWT government showed 10 species that the Committee on the Status of Endangered Wildlife in Canada had listed as special concern, threatened, or endangered that Nahana National Park Reserve provides seasonal and year-round habitat for. These include common nighthawk, grizzly bear, olive-sided flycatcher, peregrine falcon, rusty blackbird, short-eared owl, wood bison, woodland caribou, wolverine and yellow rail. In addition the bull trout Dolly Varden and the Nahana aster are listed but without a status and the Canada warbler and western toad are listed as possibly existing in the park. Mammal species found in the park include, black bear, timber wolf, moose, shrew, vole, arctic ground squirrel, marmot, mink, beaver, pine marten, lynx, snowshoe hare, river otter, muskrat, and red fox. Birds include the American kestrels, bald and golden eagles, loons, red-necked grebes, sharp-shinned hawks and trumpeter swans. It also includes the only known nesting site of the whooping crane. Fish found in the park include Arctic grayling, burbot, and canoe, lake trout, lake chub, lake whitefish, longnose dace, longnose sucker, mountain whitefish, northern pike, round whitefish, slimy sculpin, spoonhead sculpin, spottail shiner, and trout perch. The diverse range of soils offers several specialized and uncommon habitats. More than 700 species of vascular plants and 300 species of both bryophytes and lichen can be found in the park, giving it a richer variety than any other area in the NWT. Nahana aster is a very rare subspecies of aster found only in the park. History 
The Dean, sometimes called Slavey, peoples have used the lands around Nahana National Park Reserve for thousands of years. The first human occupation of the area is estimated to have occurred 9,000 to 10,000 years ago. Evidence of prehistoric human use has been found at Johan Lake and a few other sites within the park. The local oral history contains many references to the Naha tribe, a mountain-dwelling people who used to raid settlements in the adjacent lowlands. These people are said to have rather quickly and mysteriously disappeared. First contact with European fur traders expanding into the region occurred in the 18th century, and was increased with Alexander Mackenzie's exploration of the Mackenzie River and building of trading posts at Fort Simpson and Fort Liard. At both of these John MacLeod, a Scottish explorer of the area, was to serve as manager. During the 19th century, most Dean families left their nomadic lifestyles and settled into more permanent communities, often close to the trading posts. Permanent settlements were established at locations such as Nahana Butte, Fort Liard and Fort Simpson. In the late 19th century, the mountain Indians of the Nahana region would travel down the Nahana River each spring in moose skin boats to trade the winter take of furs. These boats, based on the York boats used by the Hudson's Bay Company, were up to 20 metres 66 feet in length. Constructed from 6 to 10 untanned moose hides sewn together and stretched over a spruce pole frame, these boats would transport entire families, their dogs and cargo of furs down the river during high water. Upon arrival the boat was dismantled and the hides traded along with the furs. Following a visit to the forts, these people would return to the high country with only what they could carry on their pack dogs. The stories of the Naha, and dangerous landscape that they inhabited, grew in stature with the Klondike Gold Rush as some explorers attempted to use the Nahana as a path to the famous gold fields of the Yukon, or to try and make their fortune on the Flat and South Nahana rivers. Although no significant gold was found, legends of haunted valleys and lost gold emerged after the headless corpses of Métis prospectors Willie and Frank McLeod were found around 1908. The Lost McLeod Mine, a legendary lost mine somewhere in the park, is supposed to have been where the two brothers found their gold. In the years that followed, mysterious deaths of other prospectors added to the legends. The names of park features such as Deadman Valley, Headless Creek, Headless Range and the Funeral Range, bear testimony to these stories and legends. In later years Albert Fale was a prospector in the area and met writer Raymond M. Patterson. The latter's works brought minor fame to Fale. In 1947 author Pierre Burton was sent by the Vancouver Sun to cover the North. He, along with pilot Russ Baker, flew up the Headless Valley. In 1964, explorer parachutist Jean Poirel from Montreal jumped at its source 500 kilometers (310 miles) north of Yellowknife, followed by his teammate Bertrand Bordet. Jean Poirel imagined the idea of going down the river with inflatable dinghies. During the following four consecutive expeditions in the valley, Jean Poirel discovered more than 250 caverns. The most important contained 116 doll sheep skeletons, carbon 14 dated to 2500 years BC. Jean Poirel named it Valerie Cavan after his daughter. He took topographic notes and drew detailed maps, paving the way for the park's creation. During his last expedition in 1972, he escorted Pierre Trudeau, who came in person to evaluate this superb and fascinating region. Topic. Park history Originally established in 1972, by then Prime Minister Pierre Elliott Trudeau, the park was 4,766 square kilometres 1,840 square miles in area. The park was in «reserve» status pending settlement of outstanding Aboriginal land claims in the region. In 2003, an agreement between the Decho First Nations and Parks Canada gave temporary protection to 23,000 square kilometres 8,880 square miles. In August 2007, the federal government added an extra 5,400 square kilometres 2,085 square miles, in a novel form of cooperation between federal government and native groups. The Naha Dihi Consensus Team was formed in June 2000 by Canada and the Decho First Nations. Their original main tasks included Prepare an ecological integrity statement Complete a review of the park management plan Prepare an interim park management arrangement, and 
Prepare a memorandum of understanding respecting park expansion. In 2003, these were completed and the purpose of the team changed, now dealing with cooperative management issues, according to the interim park management arrangement, until the DECHO process is completed. On 9 June 2009, the Government of Canada, with the DECHO First Nations, announced legislation that will increase the area of Nahana National Park to cover 30,050 square kilometres, 11,602 square miles, including 91% percent of the Greater Nahana ecosystem in the Decho region and most of the South Nahana River watershed. The new park area is estimated to be the home of around 500 grizzly bears, two herds of woodland caribou, as well as species of alpine sheep and goats and other species. The new boundary will include the highest mountains and largest ice fields in the Northwest Territories. With the expansion of the park there have been several added designated landing sites. Because most access to the park is done by aircraft and air access is restricted in the park, there are set places aircraft can land. Before the expansion these were limited to Virginia Falls and Rabbit Kettle Lake. Now there are five more, the Bunny Bar, Island Lake, Honeymoon Lake, Glacier Lake, and Seaplane Lake. However, only Virginia Falls and Glacier Lake are designated for day-use visitation, meaning all other sites require visitors to stay overnight in the park. A visitor center in Fort Simpson features displays on the history, culture and geography of the area. The park was among the world's first four natural heritage locations to be inscribed as World Heritage Sites by UNESCO in 1978. The South Nahana River achieved Canadian Heritage River status in 1987. Presently around 800 people visit the park every year, most of which are overnight visitors who travel down the South Nahana. The park is open year-round, but most visitors come in June, July, and August. Virginia Falls is the only area of the park where a reservation is required, which must be done months in advance to prevent overcrowding. For safety reasons, all visitors must register with park officials upon entering the park boundaries, and deregister within 24 hours of leaving. There is a park office in Nahana Butte at the end of the river, where visitors can deregister. The only practical way to get to Nahana National Park is by floatplane or by helicopter, usually from Fort Simpson but other communities and locations offering a gateway into the park include, Watson Lake, Muncho Lake, Fort Nelson and Inconu Lodge. Some people do hike in from the Nahana Range Road at Tungsten to the west of the park. In 2007 the park was voted one of the Seven Wonders of Canada in a competition sponsored by CBC Television's The National and CBC Radio 1's Sounds Like Canada. The park was the subject of a short film in 2011's National Parks Project, directed by Kevin McMahon and scored by Shad, Jace Lasek and Olga Gorias. In fiction The area was featured in Sick Heart River, a fictional river in the Nahana area, by John Buchan, 1st Baron Tweedsmuir who was the Governor General of Canada. Buchan had not visited the Nahana but had travelled down the Mackenzie and wanted to visit the area. The River, a book by Cheryl K. Tardif, is based on stories and legends from the area. See also Natsiho National Park Reserve List of National Parks of Canada List of protected areas of the Northwest Territories Nahana Formation 1985 Nahana Earthquakes <laughs>